is a 1967 Corvette convertible. It belongs to a friend of ours that uh, has been in our shop a few times. He's got his ez 4 crate motor under the hood. It's a 350. Now this car was built to be a driver. It was not built for the racetrack. It was not built to sit in a garage. It was actually built as a daily driver. And he's got a five speed behind it so he can get a little bit better gas mileage. We're gonna be taking the carburetor off of this 350 and we're gonna be installing an Edelbrock E Street EFI system. It's gonna be a complete standalone unit that's gonna bolt on in place of the carburetor and we're expecting to get a little bit better performance and economy out of it. One thing that most people don't realize is that Edelbrock has got more than a 30 year history in doing EFI. So they've got a lot of experience in building these systems. And the system we're putting on this car is very sophisticated. It's got self-learning capabilities. It's very easy to use. Uh, it's something that, you know, even if you've spent your entire life tuning cars with a screwdriver and a box full of jets, you're not going to have an intimidation factor putting it on this car. The advantage of the EFI system is you get better starting, you get better idle, you get better throttle response, and you're going to get better economy because you're basically you're tuning the system with the EFI. The EFI is going to, is going to be a self-learning system with the O2 sensor, it's going to determine where the fuel ratio needs to be, and it's going to adjust accordingly. If you can answer a couple of questions like you do with any computer screen or any, any device that you set up, basically you've got the same thing here. Uh, there's no, nothing really mechanical that you need to do once you've installed it. There's questions that are come up on the screen and it's just pushing a button on the screen and just making your answer. Now we've actually already got the system on the car, so we're kind of going to be doing this in reverse order. We're going to be showing you how it performs and then we're going to be showing you how we actually installed it. Brock really prides themselves on is the drivability of this system. They, they uh, worked on it until they got it right. They wanted to make sure that no matter what operating regime the engine was in, it was going to operate correctly. Now there's a lot of different EFI conversion systems on the market and it, you know, it makes good sense to do your research and figure out what's going to work best for you. One of the real strengths of the Edelbrock system is that it's got a nice smooth idle, it's not going to die on you at a light. And uh, you know, it makes it nice for a stick car like this where you're not going to have that high idle set to sit there and uh, sit against the torque converter at the light. You can take it out of gear, the engine smooths right out, coast right along. Now of course a beautiful day like this, top down driving around, is a lot of fun, but this is a system that's also going to work when it's cold outside, when uh, it's a little bit rainy. Not that this is a car that we would ever want to take out in the rain, but still it's nice to know that you've got something that's going to run no matter what the weather's doing outside. And as someone who is old enough to remember the uh, not so great manual choke days, I can tell you that it's just, I'm spoiled rotten by the fact that you can sit down in this car, stone cold, crank it, and it starts on the first try. That's just something you're not gonna get with a carbureted car. Bottom line on this E Street kit is that it's gonna take your muscle car and turn it into something you're gonna wanna drive every day. It takes all the worry and hassle out of owning a classic car. It's fantastic, there's really no downside. Now normally when you're doing this kind of a conversion from a well-tuned carburetor to an EFI system, you expect it to be a wash power-wise or perhaps you're going to lose a horsepower or two. And that's a good trade-off for the better drivability and better starting and just in general better street manners. In our case, we actually picked up power. It's not necessarily going to be a typical experience, but hey, we're not going to turn down the extra ponies. Uh, before we ran the car uh, with just the carburetor, our best numbers we got was right at 287 horsepower and about 330 foot-pound of torque. I was actually extremely surprised. Once we got this fuel injection on there, my first pull was 304 horsepower. There was a little blip at about 4200 RPM where you could see a little variance in the RPM as you were going through it. So I went ahead and did a second pull after cool down and I was actually super impressed by how quick this thing learned. It straightened that blip right up and my second dyno on was 310 horsepower. The wireless tablet is really a great feature for this. It's an Android tablet, it connects wirelessly to the ECU, and it handles all the tuning functions. And there's a setup wizard that basically walks you through all the different choices you need to make to get the baseline tuned set. Things like engine displacement, cam specs, that sort of thing. Then once the car is up and running, it's learning all the time. It's getting feedback from the wideband oxygen sensor and continually building out those fuel tables so that as you drive it, it actually becomes better. 
Now the uh, system also has a lot of user definable parameters, things like you know everything from uh, RPM limits to when the fans kick on, and that's just as easy to set up. Now the system doesn't require the tablet to be in the car and operating in order to work properly, but if you want to bring it along, there's a dashboard mount for it, and you can use it to monitor things like uh, all the different engine uh, ECU parameters, and you can also bring up a gauge display that uh, shows you all that stuff in real time in a pretty cool layout. It's really designed to be easy for a novice to use and have enough power so that pros have the ability to adjust a lot of the parameters that they want to have uh, direct control over. This kit comes with everything you'll need minus a couple little fittings if in fact you decide to run, you know, um, where you decide to mount your components. You may need a little bit of extra fuel in or a, a couple extra fittings, but it actually says that in the instructions as well. But I actually didn't need any extra fittings. It supplied me with everything I needed. The E Street EFI system has several main components. There's the E Street ECU, which is the brains of the system, the 7 inch tablet, and the EFI throttle body assembly. Now, the throttle body assembly contains most of the hardware involved in the installation, things like the injectors and a few of the sensors. You also get an included oxygen sensor, a coolant temperature sensor, and Edelbrock also provides all the wiring harnesses you need to do your installation. This is going to be ideal for any V8 engine that was originally equipped with a carburetor and has an intake manifold set up with a 4150 style square bore flange. For the novice, you could probably expect about a day and a half, maybe two days to install this kit. What we recommend is, is you know, lay it out first. Look at, what's, look at what's going into the car, read the instructions, determine where you want to mount things. One of the things that we did is we got the car in early, we decided where we were going to mount components, we decided what was best. And, and then we went from there. If, if you wait to do all that when you're going to install it, then you're going to be taking a little bit more time. But once you've made all these decisions and you've decided where you're going to mount things and how you're going to run your fuel lines and everything, about a day and a half, maybe two days. Well, that's kind of the nice thing. There's, there's three different setups that you can get with the Edelbrock unit. The first system that's available is a returnless style system. What that means is you put an inline electric fuel pump and you feed the throttle body directly and you don't have to worry about running a line back to the fuel tank. The second fuel system available for the E Street EFI is the return style fuel system. What that means is you're going to take the fuel from the tank, either with an electric inline pump or an in-tank pump, feed the throttle body, and then you run a line back to the fuel tank. That means you're going to have to find a location for that return line to the fuel tank. The third system for the E Street EFI is the sump tank kit, which is what we're using. You use a mechanical fuel pump on the front of the engine as a lift pump, and that feeds the sump tank. The sump tank will store about a gallon of fuel, and the electric pump is inside the sump tank, and that feeds your throttle body. Anytime you have a fuel-injected vehicle, it uses an O2 sensor to monitor your air-fuel ratio for the tuning of the fuel system. Um, it tells you how much fuel to add or take away depending on what the car is doing. And it was actually a really simple install as well. I did it myself because obviously we have a shop here, but if you were just an at-home installer, um, you could take uh, this car to an exhaust shop, you know, a day or two before you're ready to do the install and have them weld the bung and it includes a plug as well. So you don't have to run the O2 bung in a car when it's not warmed up, which will destroy your O2 bung or your O2 sensor. Um, no, actually, in, in our specific application, we decided to actually flip our fuel rails around on the throttle body, which they're identical, so you can put them passenger side or driver side. Because of where we mounted our sump, we decided to come out the driver side with them. And so the only thing we had to do there was point the fuel line down to clear the bottom of the air cleaner. Yeah, now this is a really super simple wiring harness. Um, you, I mean, your electrical knowledge can be next to none to really plug this thing in. I mean, you need power ground, ignition, and other than that, a tack signal. And besides those things, it's all plug and play, super labeled, really easy to know. They have really good pictures of every electrical connection in their instruction manual. So if you're like, oh, I don't know what a map sensor is, there's a picture of it. Well, get used to seeing some improvements. You're, you know, as cliche as it sounds, these kind of kits, they do pay for themselves because you're, you're going to get better fuel mileage. Um, the car is going to run a lot better. These types of kits, the nice thing about them is you go out on a cold day, you turn the key and it starts up. You're not messing with a choke, you're not messing with trying to start it by pumping the gas pedal. You don't have to worry about any of that. It's just going to be a lot more convenient, it's going to make your classic car a lot more drivable and you're going to want to drive it more. I think that as the system becomes more popular, it's really going to do a lot for the hot rodding hobby just because it's going to get a lot of cars that are sitting in garages right now out onto the road. People are too frustrated with you know having a carburetor that's ill-tuned or you know 
pulling up to cruise night and the car just reeks of gas because it's pig rich or whatever, um, this totally eliminates that. It just makes the car run.